have you ever heard about the dead sea scrolls and uh, why are they important do you know somebody or have you heard about people talking about the dead sea scrolls and you ask yourself why are they important in any way now telling you about the dead sea scrolls is basically to tell you and to explain to you how god preserves his word and god is so so precise with what he says and his word is true remember in the book of john 17:17 17, 17, it says sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth the word of god is, the word of god is truth okay and uh, you can take that to the bank whatever he says is true and uh, the whole aspect of the dead sea scrolls is just to confirm is like god was confirming to people how much his word is true we have to understand that the the first uh, the first of the dead sea scroll uh, discoveries occurred in around uh, 1947 in uh, Qumran if you ever heard about a place called Qumran uh, this is a village situated about 20 miles east of uh, Jerusalem on the northwest northwest shore of the Dead Sea uh, just a young a young Bedouin shepherd um, who was following a goat that had uh, gone astray, uh, he tossed a rock into one of the caves along the sea cliffs and heard a cracking sound. Now, the rock had hit a ceramic pot containing leather and papyrus scrolls that were determined to be nearly 20 century uh, centuries old. Ten years and many searches later, 11 caves, 11 caves around the Dead Sea were found to contain tens, tens of thousands, hmm? were found to contain uh, tens of thousands of scrolls, as, or we can call them scroll fragments, dating from the third century to uh, third century bc to around ad 68 and they all represented an estimated 800 separate works and uh we have to understand that the dead sea scrolls comprised of a vast collection of uh, jewish documents written in hebrew aramaic greek and uh encompassing many subjects and uh, literally styles and uh, they included manuscripts or fragments of every book in the hebrew bible except the book of esther okay uh and all of them created nearly 1000 uh they, they, they were created nearly 1000 years earlier than any other previous uh previously known biblical manuscripts the scrolls also contain the earliest existing biblical commentaries uh on the book of habakkuk and uh, other writings among them religious works pertaining to jewish sects of the time and uh the legends the legends of uh what was contained in the Dead Sea Scrolls, you have to understand they are far beyond what was actually there. And there was no lost books. There was no lost book, okay, or books. Like uh, most of the people say that in the Bible there are some books which are lost and things like that, the lost books uh, of the Bible. Others are saying uh, they call them the forgotten books of Eden, things like that. There are no books which are lost. There are no books which are lost, okay? Of the any, any book of the Bible or any other literature per se, okay? Because there was not already any other copies of the same. Because the Bible is very clear, and God wants to show us this, and He wants to explain to us that no word of His will be lost. Do you, do you, do you know what the Bible says? 
in the book of Isaiah 36, uh, 34, 16, it says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, No one of these shall fail. None shall want a mate for for my mouth it has commanded, his spirit is, ha, hath gathered. And also other translations, they say, none of this will be missing. Seek from the book of the Lord. None will be missing. Okay. Uh, the Bible says so many things concerning uh, itself. And it tells us that the word is true, like I read for you. It's very true. And nothing, no word of God comes out in vain. Okay. None goes out in vain. So the vast majority of the Dead Sea Scrolls were simply copies of books of the Old Testament from around 250 to 150 BC. Uh, and a copy or portion of nearly every Old Testament book was found in Qumran. Okay. Um, there were also extra biblical and uh, apocryphal books we, we call them apocryphal books found as well but again the vast majority of the scrolls were copied uh, were just copies of the hebrews old testament just hebrew old testament and the dead sea scrolls they were such an amazing discovery in that the scrolls were in excellent condition <laughs> okay uh, and had remained hidden for so long over 2000 years and the dead sea scrolls can also give us um uh confidence okay this is basically a way of god just giving us confidence in 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 uh in the in the word of god in the reliability of the old testament manuscripts since there were minimal differences between the manuscripts okay uh, that had been uh, discovered and those that were found in Qumran. Clearly, this, this is just a testament to the way God has preserved his word through the centuries, protecting it from extinctions and guarding it against a significant error. There are those people who say, okay, Paul we know. Paul is, a, you know, Paul and the apostles, they can vividly testify about the New Testament. What about the Old Testament? Is it really, really true? But I think these uh, scrolls, the Dead Sea Scrolls, because most of them were the Old Testament, it was just a way of God trying to say, this is true. The Old Testament is true, just the way the New Testament is. Even the Old Testament is also true. And God doing all these kind of things, preserving his word, so that he can show, guys, I want you to know that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16 So don't, don't fear the word of God. It's really true. Even a full stop, even a comma means something. And God is very true with his word. And that's why he preserved these Dead Sea Scrolls. Not for us to create another Bible because what is written in the Dead Sea Scrolls is exactly what is in the Old Testament. But uh, he preserved it just to be an assurance. Hey, my children, this is true. You can take it to the bank. You can believe it. Okay? So that's, I believe that's the reason why God uh, preserved these Dead Sea Scrolls. So that we can see and be able to have even much more confidence in the word of God. And say, wow, wow. You mean this one is telling, going straight the same way with the other? then the word of God is true, okay? He was just confirming. And even the other scrolls which have been found lately, I think uh, this year, 2021, uh, I think uh, I, in, in the same places, I don't, I don't remember about them very well, but you can Google and see. You will see the other uh, scrolls which are found actually is just to confirm the word of God and just to give us uh, instructions and tell us, hey guys, you can count on me. You can count on my word. Okay, And if you're out there and you're still not saved, please believe the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. How did Jesus die? Jesus died by shedding his blood. Because without shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. Uh, the blood was very important because Leviticus 17, 11 tells us the life of the flesh is in the blood. So it had uh, 
there had to be a chance whereby now blood has to be shed for the forgiveness but it's not just any blood it is the blood of an innocent person you're a sinner i am a sinner we can't atone for each other i can't atone for you i can't save you you can't save me neither can anything save us but only an innocent being who is jesus and uh, the good news is that 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's the good news because there is a bad news. The bad news is that all have sinned and have come uh, short of the glory of God and uh, we are supposed to die because uh, the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. But the good news is that someone died for us. Who is Jesus? So that whoever will believe in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. Everlasting life. So my friends, if you believe that Jesus died for you, all you need to do is just confess to him what you believe because confession is only done on what you know. You understand, you believe, and then you, know, you, you, you confess. You can confess what you don't know. And that's why salvation is by understanding, by believing in your heart. Confession is just what is, you have already believed, okay? So you just confess and tell Christ, hey, Jesus, I thank you for dying for my sins. I believe that you were buried, you died, you were buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, for me. And I received that atonement, that payment of sin by faith. And my friends, if you've done that, then you're saved, sealed and sanctified. And God has told you that these words are true and all scripture is God breathed. So everything he has said is true and it will come to fulfillment. If you enjoyed these videos, please give them a like and also you can share the videos. Let other people be able to, uh, to hear and understand. And also you can uh, subscribe also to watch more videos which we post every day and uh, hit the notification bell. So that whenever we post, you can always be notified. And likewise, uh, please on the, on the description, we have a, a couple of other channels outside the YouTube that you can go and check what we post. And I also share to your friends. God bless you and have a good time.